أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا سرات المستقيم سرات الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المكذوب عليهم ولا دوالين آمين لإيلا في كرش إيلا في أمره لا تشتع وصيف فليعبدوا رب هذا بلد الذي أتامن أم من يوء وآمن أم من أوف أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بلزاد الزمان دات وقد نات إنه كونسل على هيدا ناس تت إنه سيتا دس كان فول بار إز دي لايت إنه دا لاب دا لادا هاد إن دس لادا سي ايديت سن رايس إن سن دون هما قد يه لك تري بلاتة بار دا ريفرز أف واتا دات برنجات فراد فروت إن إس سيزان هم ليب نافا أغو ويدا إن واسو ريفا إم دوال سال براس با ييي دا هيدا دم نادي سو دم دي لك تشاف ويدا وين ريفت أوي دير and the righteous for the Lord God Jah love the way of the righteous and the way of the sinner man them always and always I go perish let the people of the most high God say Jah Kadama we gruma bea te la e Higzag beer Tana yista lina ba shante 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 Kadama we gruma bea te la e This is the black pot aka kukushonamu where we speak truth to power. And my name. Black Rasta. Now, in every traditional African home, there is a black pot. And each time this black pot sits on the fire, there is something super sumptuous cooking. Ingredients of so many different types, shapes and sizes, colors and even aromas and flavors. Abandon all their differences, relegating all those into a corner. And relocating into the black pot where they are subjected to some good amount of heating. Yes. And then they produce food in the aftermath. Now, ironically, the food is not even enjoyed by the black pot. Neither is it enjoyed by the ingredients. It is enjoyed by us, the eaters. Yet every time, the black pot and the ingredients will collaborate to be able to give us food. What lesson can we derive from this? It's a lesson of selflessness. It's a lesson of generational thinking. It's a lesson of sacrifice. And it's a lesson of unity. Is a lesson in humility. We all have our pride. But when we put aside our pride to be able to move higher and higher in different strides, then we say that we are moving in unison. In other words, we are united. My brother, my sister, how many of us, if we get to know that we will die the following year, come what may, because our doctor has told us that we will die. We are not well. We have a certain disease, a medical condition that requires that the maximum we can go is one year. Will we plant trees that will take 30 years to grow? Trees that will take 30 years to grow? Or will plant tomatoes and onions that will mature within one year so we can eat before we die? Think about it. We are making children. And when we make children, they also make children. Would you not be glad wherever you are that your grandchildren would be benefiting from your handiworks? Would you not be happy to know that what you are doing today will outlive you so many more people can come and enjoy that? The greatest people in history were not people who made money and were selfish and went away. They were people who shared what they had with society. What is the importance of wealth if it cannot help other people? 
How many of us believe that we have worked so hard to make this money? And for that matter, we should be the only people, in fact, who should enjoy it. No other person should. That is why the black pot is here. This is the show. And it's called the black pot. And here we don't talk politics. Here we do not talk religion. Neither do we talk sports. All we talk about is patriotism. Patriotism is the fundamental. In fact, it is the foundation. Without which no house can stand. Without which no house can be built. That is why we continue to say that this is in the service of God and country. Is the black port, aka Kokushonomo. And I want to say that we are live on YouTube, and our YouTube channel is Black Empire Media, B L A K K, Black Empire Media. We are also live on Facebook, and our Facebook page also calls us Black Empire Media. Please subscribe to our channel, hit on the notification bell so that each time we are on, you will be the first person to see us. Do me a favor, please share this broadcast like it and also comment because we shall read your comments later in the show i want to say thank you so much for allowing us into your comfort zone we appreciate you and we love you and we never ever will take you for granted now i have some good news for you you want to travel around africa around america maybe you want to even go to the schengen but paperwork is always a problem i have good news for you Prudy Workforce is here. Now, Prudy Workforce will take you around Africa. Do you want to go to Kenya? You want to go to South Africa? Maybe you want to even go to uh, that beautiful country called Kenya. Maybe you want to go all the way to that beautiful country called uh, Zanzibar. Again, you might want to travel to America. Maybe you want to go to South America. You want to go to North America. Maybe you want to even go to the Schengen States. No problem. Listen, Prudy Workforce is here. And Prudy Workforce, my brother, my sister, would make sure that you get your visa on a silver platter. Would make sure that you get free accommodation when you arrive. Prudy Workforce would also make sure that you are given an air ticket for free. You know how you can do that? Just call Prudy Workforce now. The numbers are rolling on your screen right now. Call Prudy Workforce right now. They are located right there inside Medina at the taxi rank next to the Echo Bank. And everything is everything. I'll tell you what you will need. You will need only your passport size photograph. You will also need a bio page of your passport, the photocopy. And then finally, you will need a bank statement. But that bank statement, don't worry, even if you have one penny in it. Maybe you just have one CD in it. Maybe 50 pesos, it doesn't matter. All we need is a bank statement. The good news is that whilst you are out there on vacation, any country of your choice, be it America, be it Canada, be it Australia, or any of the Schengen countries, there's an opportunity for you to work and finance your travel or your vacation. Some people have to catch up their vacation because they've run out of money. With Prudy Workforce, they will find you a job. But you must have a certain kind of qualification. Are you a mason? Are you a skilled worker like a carpenter? Maybe you are a roofer or a painter, a bricklayer. Maybe you are even a welder. Maybe you are a driver. Or are you a teacher? Are you a doctor? Are you a nurse? No problem. So that is what it is. Call Prudy Workforce right now. Fly out of the nation to any country of your choice, spanning all the way from Africa, covering Asia, and going through South America and North America, and even Oceania. Some of you want to go to Tahiti. Some even want to go to Haiti. No problem. And remember, you will never be stranded because you will work to make money and then finance your vacation. Make sure you don't overstay and make sure you make enough money to come home and invest so Ghana can also prosper. Prudy Workforce is here. And my name, Black Rasta. This is the Black Port, a.k.a. Kukushonemo, where we speak truth to power. Come here! Now, today we have four different issues to, we want to look at. 
and I need you to come along. They are crunchingly hot. Number one, watch this. It looks like it's taking us to the former president's office. Mahama attacked. Why would Mahama be attacked? Who is attacking Mahama? What is the problem? Now, the former president of the Republic of Ghana is this man here. You see, he's called John Dramani Mahama. He ruled us as a vice president. Then he became the default president when the president passed on J.E.A. Mills. And then he stood for elections and won his very first tenure as president. And when he tried the second time, Ghanaian said, no, we've had enough of your corruption. We've had enough of some of the things that you did. Please go back and sit down. He told Ghanaians, posterity will judge me whether I did well or bad. At the end of the day, it looks like the Ghanaians who were calling for his head so that Barabbas could be set free. Today are all kneeling down and begging him. At least we saw nurses kneeling before him in the Volta region and beyond, begging him to forgive them for the decision that they, they took. They thought that they were in terrible times and therefore voted this president into power. I'm talking about Nana Kufuado. But they realized that they had gone into Satan's den. In fact, so this man here is called John Dramani Mahama. John Dramani Mahama has been attacked what did he say why are people attacking him it is something we have talked about before john dramani mahama is re-echoing the same sentiments that we gave you only yesterday run it my youth watch it mahama challenges recent wasi results did you see that mahama Challenges recent WASI results, and this is from Adum Online. It's one of the authentic uh, news portals we can find in Ghana. Run the story, my youth. And this is actually from My Joy Online. Flag bearer of the National Democratic Congress, NDC, John Dramani Mahama, has challenged the authenticity of the recent results for the West African uh, Senior School Certificate Examination, WASI. According to him, some invigilators relaxed on the job as teachers are found aiding students in answering questions. Run it quick, my youth. In many places, they let the children cheat. You go to places and the teachers are conniving with the students to cheat. The effect would be seen later, Mr. Mahama said. Please underline that. He said that the effect would be seen later. Today, you let them cheat. You let them pass. They come out with all the A's. You may not feel it now, but you will feel it later. You are going to breed a nation of cheats and liars, a nation of dunderheads, a nation of square pegs in round holes. That is what the former president is talking about. Now, the former president who is on the building Ghana tour believes the development will have dire consequences on the uh, country's educational system in future. You certify uh, these children saying they are of this standard and either the BECE or SSCE and that child will use that certificate, go abroad to a school and they will find out that your qualification is not up to the standard you say it is. Meanwhile, professional and economic groupings continue to honor invitations from the NDC to aid in the drawing of the party's manifesto by voicing challenges within their sector. That's it. Now, my, my brother, we all have seen this sad thing. Even Wayek came out to say that a number of the children cheated. Some of them were even given the leeway to take their phones into the examination hall and use AI, artificial intelligence, to answer questions. Some of them were so daft, they copied ditto ditto what the AI said, including things like, I do not get what you are trying to say. They copied all that and wrote that as part of their answers. So embarrassing. 
Remember the NAT, Ghana National Association of Teachers, came out to tell Wayek to bring evidence as to the students cheating. And Wayek was good enough to bring evidence of cheating. My brother, this is not the first time we are hearing of students cheating. There was a school where students went on the rampage all because the headmaster of the school was not allowing them to cheat in examinations. Unlike in other schools where teachers went to sleep and they allowed students to cheat. It's sad. But hear me now. Come here. I am hurt when our future leaders are grown on the pedestal and foundation of cheating and lying. I wonder what kind of generation we are going to be building. Why would you cheat to pass? So that what? So that you deceive people that you are brilliant when you are not? So that you tell people that you pass when you actually would have failed? Anybody who cheats in examinations has no confidence. Anybody who cheats in examinations is sick upstairs. It's a mental problem. If you go into the examination hall, the question comes up and you cannot answer. It's a matter of saying you cannot answer. It's not a crime. It's not a curse. So why would somebody want to cheat? You want to cheat so you come and deceive people that, oh, you pass your exam. They will clap for you and say you are brilliant. Deep inside you, you know that you are only fooling yourself. These are the people who become our finance ministers later. These are rich people's children. The rich people are able to pay for them to be able to get good grace. Whilst my children and the farmer's children who work very hard and pass their examinations genuinely do not even get proper schools to attend. Rich people's children who pass their examinations via cheating and buying of examination questions and results are those who are in those big schools. My children will go to Kessinke, SHS. They will go to Duri, Gaga, Gaga, Duri, SHS, and all the other SHS that you can't find on the map. My brother, it hurts me. It breaks my heart. But people are attacking Mahama for speaking the truth. And I'm going to tell you something interesting. Why would teachers want their students to cheat? Two reasons. Number one is this. Private schools are all over Ghana. And they want to have good results. So many more students will come to their school subsequently. And they will make money. So it's about the money. It's not about the brain. They are stupid teachers. Those who do that. Stupid schools. They are only looking for the money. They are not looking at growing. The brain of the child. In my days, teachers were parents. In my days, if a teacher punished a child, in fact, the father would punish the child again. In my days, teachers were revered. In fact, the prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, may the peace and blessings of God be upon him. You know what he said? He looked at his children one day and said, Ah, my children. I wish your teacher would allow me to come and shine his shoes every day. Because shining your teacher's shoes would show how much appreciation I have for teachers who groom and train my children. The same prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, said that if knowledge is found as far as in China, in those days, China was seen as the end of the world. Just as novels also said Timbuktu was at the end of the world. So people had their own idea as to which was the end of the world. In Arabia, they saw China as the end of the world. The Prophet Muhammad said, if knowledge is over there in China, please be quick to go get it. That's how much importance he gave to education. Remember, he himself was stuck illiterate. But today, Teachers are rapists. Some teachers are pedophiles. Some teachers are thieves. Some teachers are even liars. And I don't know who trains them. The training has become so weak. 
Now, teachers are those who are aiding students to cheat so that the school can get a good name. Where are we going? Nigeria did it. Some years ago, nobody wanted to go to school in Nigeria. Everybody was running away from Nigeria. Everyone was running to Sierra Leone for education. It came to a time it shifted to Zimbabwe. The quality of the education is what draws people close. Not the number of passes you have. We know some schools that pass every year. Yet their students are as daft as whoever. People are attacking Mahama. Run it, my youth. Watch this. Attacking him. And this is from Ghana Web. He says, Mahama attacked for saying SHS students passed Wasi because they were allowed to cheat. Come here. Watch this. Former President John Dramani Mohammed's comment that senior high school students were allowed to cheat. Hence the historic results in the 2023 edition has not gone down well with Ghanaians who have expressed disappointment at the former president. I told you two reasons. One, because they want the schools to look good so that more students can come. It's all about money. Two, for political reasons. And that's what Mahama is saying there. Nana Akufuado introduced free SHS. It is good. Last year, last two years, a lot of students failed. And people started tongue-lashing the system, saying that they don't give adequate time to the students to study. Double-track system, triple-track system, quadruple-track system. We used to go to school. First time, second time, third time. Today, no, it's not like that. It's double track system, triple track system, quadruple track. You go in for how many months and go and sit home for the same number of months waiting for other people to go in. They are not encouraged to even study on their own. They are not encouraged to stand firm and be scholarly. Students are not scholarly anymore. They are only interested in passing examinations. Now, if you go to school just to pass examinations, then it's unfortunate. We go to school to acquire knowledge, not to pass examinations. How many people will write this down? How many will write it down? If we go to school just to pass examinations, then it is unfortunate. The purpose of school is not to pass examinations, but to acquire knowledge. Hallelujah. I've asked this question before. How many of us will still go to school if we were not given certificates at the end of school? Would you still go to school? How many people will still go to school and after completion, you don't get a certificate. The certificate is in your head. We are more interested in the paper aspect of our scholarliness and not the paper upstairs. It takes some people years to understand. Some will have to chew green grass tomorrow before they understand this. That is why some of the best students are not necessarily those who passed the best. To God be the glory. It's the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushinu. Bring back that story. Why are people attacking John Dramani Mahama? Listen to this. Now, the 2023 Wasi results released earlier uh, this month, uh, has been described as the best since 2015 and with the graduates uh, being products of the free SHS policy by the NPP government, many have credited the policy for its positive impact on secondary education. So they are looking at it. The success of the free SHS, they are looking at it in the sense that many people have passed for that matter, is successful. 
Oh, wow. Really? My brother, we need to go back to the basics. What did they study? Our educational system, is it good enough? Our scientists do not even know the difference between vernier calipers and rulers. Our scientists, our students who are studying science in the schools, they don't know the difference between a Komodo dragon and an alligator. They don't know the difference between a leopard and a tiger. They don't know the difference between a wild dog and a hyena. They do not know the difference between a crocodile and an alligator. They don't know the difference between tilapia and salmon. A lot of them do not even know the difference between a parrot and a magpie. A lot more cannot identify hydrogen gas from oxygen. We are more interested in the theory than the practical. But this is a practical world. Why should you attack Mahama? What he said is the truth. Edu Watch came out and we carried this yesterday to tell us how people never even sat in class. They paid some 8,000 Ghana cities and they gave them 8 A's in chain. What a shame. Somebody's maid servant. The master wanted to take her to school. He took the maid servant to school only for the head of the institution to say, oh, you don't really need to do this. Just pay 8,000 and go home. When they write the examination, she will get 8 A's. He was shocked. Please, don't let us be so much in a hurry to push away some of these concerns or else we will laugh at the wrong side of our faces. Trust me. It's a black pot. A.K.A. Koko Show No More. And here we speak truth to power. Come here. The next thing we are looking at is also rolling on the screen. And I know you're going to be interested in this. Watch this. Martin Amidu calls Kisi Eja being corrupt, desperate. Who is Martin Amidu? Martin Amidu is the man whose photograph you see here. He's a failed special prosecutor. He disgraced all of us. Hey! When he was being vetted for the position of the OSP, some of us said that corruption will finally get a good beating in this country. The arrogance with which he answered questions in parliament. You could see that this is a spoiled child. Arrogance! First class arrogance. He was not even interested in jests, jokes, just to lighten up the tense atmosphere. I remember he was so angry with Haruna Idrisu on Rabu. Do you all remember that vetting? Do we all remember that vetting? It was crazy, my brother. But I was so happy. I said that, listen, the man is not ready for any jokes. The man is ready for action. This man is going to go in there and give corruption a good beating. But he went in there. He couldn't even prosecute a cockroach, let alone a lizard. I was so excited. I called his village chief at Sandema and invited him to talk to us about Martin Amidu being the OSP. I mean, the special prosecutor. And he said so many good things. He said, ah, you all will see the quality of our people. Martin Amidu went in there, disgraced his village chief, disgraced me, and disgraced the whole of Ghana. Come here! Watch this. Martin Amidu occupied the very first office of the special prosecutor. For several months, nothing was happening. When he came in, people even conjectured and put out some names claiming that Martin Amidu was investigating them. Oh my God. He couldn't even investigate a such a fly. 
Let alone man pam. Alligator. My brother. Then we started hearing that he wanted a jacuzzi in his office before he could work. Then we started hearing he wanted seven air conditioners in his office before he could work. Some ridiculous things people were just throwing around just to ridicule him. We still had hope that something would happen. Martin Amidu, at the end of the day, ran out of the office of the special prosecutor like a toad on heat and under attack in broad daylight. When he came out, he said, Hey! Nana Akufuado is the mother serpent of corruption. I cannot work with him. I am going away. And, Matt, and he got a response from the president. He wrote and said, you have failed. If I am the mother serpent of corruption, let everybody know that this is what you have seen about me and authenticate your utterances. Any coward can run around and say, the president is corrupt. And that's it. Have you given evidence? He was more interested in writing letters than in investigating corrupt people. He was a disgrace to us. Then the little boy called Kise Jabing, this boy, 42-year-old Kise Jabing, some people say 41, and some people add another year, 42, 43. Whatever it is, he's a young man. Kise Jabing also a lawyer, not a lawyer of the status and caliber of Martin Amido. Many were those who said, oh, this boy will not be able to make it if the big man himself could not do it. But the small boy said, he will do it. He went in there. Martin Abidu should have shut up. He didn't. He rather started writing letters condemning this boy and saying that this little boy, he called him a little boy, small boy, he couldn't do anything. But at least in his tenure of office, we have seen him prosecute people and retrieve money for the state. At least in the short term that he's been in office, he worked understaffed until recently when he got what he wanted. Now we are hearing that there were even attempts on his life. He had to ask for military style vehicles in order to protect himself. He's called Kisye Japing. These days he's gone under so much criticism. And Martin Amidu is back again with an avalanche of criticisms. Run it, my youth. Watch this. You are corrupt and desperate. Martin Amidu tells Kisye Jabin, Come here! You think so, you day wise. Run the story, my youth. Watch this. Former special prosecutor Martin Amidu has leveled serious allegations against his successor, Kisye Jabin. Martin Amido accused the special prosecutor of attempting to shield mismanagement, corruption, and malpractices within the office of the special prosecutor from public scrutiny. The former anti-corruption crusader contends that a Jabing is resorting to desperate measures, including blackmailing the government and seeking support from opposition figures. To divert attention from the alleged wrongdoing within the OSP. The special prosecutor, William Kisie Jabing, is so desperate to protect the mismanagement, the culture of corruption, massive staff recruitment uh, uh, malpractices, and public procurement malpractices, which have become pervasive and endemic within the office of the special prosecutor. On the blind side of President Nana Adodankwa Akuf Adokise Jabing has resorted to blackmailing the government and courting leading members of the opposition National Democratic Congress to create the impression that it is his appointing authority that is impeding his so called fight against corruption. That shit didn't come here. Martin Amid, I'm so ashamed of you, honestly. These were the same things you said when you ran out of office like a pregnant toad. And today, the little boy is doing his bit. And all you can say is that those things that you said that he is repeating, he is lying, but you are not lying. What kind of a joke is this? I thought Martin Amidu would say something of substance. 
If the boy is blackmailing the government, did you blackmail Nana Akufuado when you called him the mother serpent of corruption? Or you are somebody who is so iconical eh, with your grammar, so you want to throw it in front of us like a mat spread in front of Mount Zion. I'm so ashamed of this guy. Shut up and go sit somewhere with your fail where you have failed, you couldn't do it. Many people have supported you, they said you were understaffed. Now this boy has come in to do his work. You are saying that he has recruited massively. We can go into that. Let us investigate who can tell us or who can authenticate the fact that the man has recruited massively people he doesn't need. He is the one you've given the work to. And he says, I need this number of people to be able to work. You either agree or say no. You cannot come back and, and, and say that he's corrupt when he told you from the start that this is the stuff he will need to be able to fly. If you needed two to be able to fly. It's just like the number of ministers and all that. Mahama had fewer ministers. Nana Kufuado came in with a whole uh, nation of MPs uh, and, 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 and what ministers and so on and so forth. I beg your pardon. A whole nation, a whole army of ministers of state. In some ministries, I hear there are even four deputies. But that's what Nana Ado says he can work with. We will judge him at the end of the day by what work he's been able to do with his massive recruitment. How does that make Nana Akufuado corrupt? Until we see the work he's able to bring out, we cannot prima facie come out and say that no, he's corrupt because look, Kisie Jabing, from reports that I got, it's only last year he was able to get the staff that he needed. All along, he's been working understaffed. Salaries were not even coming. We all remember when he was crying all over the place for several months, no money was paid to him. Then you come out and say that the guy is what? He's blackmailing the government in power. Did you blackmail the government when you called Dana Akufuado the mother serpent of corruption? Why is it that some old men are so embarrassed that they couldn't do it and some little boys have come to the... You should be clapping for him. Or are you embarrassed that the little boy, the small boy, that you just brushed off is beginning to do some things which are okay? Yes, he might have some lapses. The small boy might have some lapses. He might be extravagant. He might have gone to ask for A, B, C, D, E, F. But at least we have seen some results. You were in there, not even a cockroach. Only big English and big grammar and letters. You should go into the Guinness Book of Records for letter writing, the longest letters in the world. You. Letter tone. You should have that. Letter tone. In fact, Martin Amidu should go into the Guinness World Records for the longest letters in the world. You speak grammar more than the Queen of England. What has that helped you to achieve? Apart from going to court and confusing even the judges and the magistrates and everybody. Oh, Martin Amidu, I'm so disappointed in this. I am truly disappointed. I am truly disappointed. Kisei Jabing should invite this man. You are calling him corrupt. Invite him. Let him give his facts. Let him give his figures. You are still the special prosecutor. Somebody says that you are corrupt. Invite him over and find out or get an independent body to be able to investigate that. I don't know what you lawyers say about it, but me as a lay person, I will call you or I will take you to court to substantiate what you are. You couldn't do it when you were given the opportunity. Today you are there ranting. That's shame away. It's the Blackport. Come here. A.K.A. Koko Show No Where we speak truth to power. When we return, we shall have more. Give me some 
10 seconds. I'll be back. And when I return, remember to keep your messages coming in. We shall read your messages and we have more. Hey! Wayo! This is the Blackport, aka Coco Shono, and we're having some problem with our internet connection. So um, it keeps breaking up left, right, and center. I don't know. These days, when it's time for the Blackport, we have some of these issues. But we are unperturbed. <laughs> the message will still flow. Yeah, we do apologize, man. But we know what times these are. Next to worry, my youth. All right, so this is interesting. It says the real reason Kwame Nkrumah locked up JB Dankwa. The real reason Kwame Nkrumah locked up JB Dankwa. We all know that JB Dankwa was arrested and then re arrested, and Nkrumah refused to release him and he died in prison. He died in prison. There was even a photograph that was taken of him whilst he was in prison. You will see that photograph. This is J.B. Dankwa. He was born in 1895. 1895. And he died in prison. In fact, this man starts here was an astute lawyer, very powerful lawyer. In fact, they were those who started fighting for the independence of this nation. At the end of the day, ego got into them. Tribalism got into them. This man wanted Ghana to be called Akan land, all because he was Akan. Therefore, the whole Ghana didn't matter if it was not called Akan land. He didn't care about the people from the north, people from the Volta. He wanted this country to be called Akan land. And Nkrumah said, no. Let us get everybody involved. And when you look at the work of Kwame Nkrumah, how he was able to get all these ethnic groups that hitherto could have been part of some other countries, Togo and the rest. The northern people, the people from the Volta region, he got all of them here. There was a time Nkrumah even wanted to pull Togo into Ghana. He wanted one big country. He hated fragmentalism. He said, we can't call it a can land. When we do that, we're going to alienate a lot of ethnic groups in this country. He went deeper into it. And then he came out with Ghana. But today, J.P. Dankwa is credited with the name Ghana. I, as a historian and a scholar of history, I cannot agree that J.P. Dankwa was responsible for the name Ghana. From his thoughts. Of course, Ghana was taken from the ancient kingdom of Ghana, whose very first king was called Dinga Sise. And the last king was called Tinkaminan. J.B. Dankwa was a friend of Kwame Nkrumah. 
they were those who invited Kwame Nkrumah to join the UGCC, sponsored and financed by the Great Power Grant. It's sad. J.B. Dankwa, at the end of the day, was arrested by Kwame Nkrumah in the Preventive Detention Act to prevent people from assassinating him. Nkrumah had grown quite unpopular among some of these people and they sought to kill him because of the so-called one-party state. Before that, they didn't even like him. So the one-party state became a very beautiful bouquet of flowers with hidden bombs in there to finish up Kwame Nkrumah. But I have news for you. Today we are getting to see why Kwame Nkrumah locked up J.B. Dankwa and he ended up dying at the Insawam Maximum Prisons. Run it, my youth. And this is published by Ghana Web. Here is why J.B. Dankwa of UGCC was rearrested and detained by Nkrumah in 1964. And there you will see J.B. Dankwa lying down in prison. Can you see him? Can you see him? Those of you who cannot see the picture well, he's wearing something like pajamas. But that is a prison uniform. And his head is on the left. His two arms have crossed right in front of him, lying down. That's a black and white photograph. This is Sawan prison. That was where he died. Run the story, my youth. Watch this. An archival record has revealed the circumstances leading to the rearrest and detention of Joseph Buache Dankwa in 1964, two years before Nkrumah was overthrown. As a leader of the United Gold Coast Convention, Dankwa was rearrested by the then President Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah on January 8, 1964. According to a report by GhanaCrimes.com, the reason for his rearrest was his suspected involvement in a botched attempt to kill Nkrumah, which was carried out on January 2. So six days after, J.B. Dankwa was arrested. And this happened where? It happened right there at Nkrumah's office in front. On January 2, 1964, by police constable set a metaway and killed Nkrumah's bodyguard Salfudagati. On our history channel, go through it, you will see the details of how Nkrumah's bodyguard Salfudagati was killed as he jumped in front of Nkrumah and took the bullets coming from constable set a metaway. How did Nkrumah get to know that it was J.B. Dankwa who was behind this? Watch this. J.B. Dankwa had previously been arrested and detained under the Preventive Detention Act, PDA, on October the 3rd, 1961. How many years back? How many years back? Three years back. Dankwa was allegedly, and this is very important, he was arrested on the 3rd of October 1961 and released on June 22, 1962. Dankwa was allegedly found to possess his own signed handwritten speech, which he intended for broadcast in the wake of the coup or the assassination. Did you see that? Dash it away. When they attempted to kill Kwame Nkrumah on the 2nd of January, J2, in 1964, and his own bodyguard, Salfudagati, took the bullets for Nkrumah and died. Salfudagati's wife is still alive. We're going to be coming out with a documentary by next week so you can watch it on this same channel. Hey! Graphic information. Investigators went to J.B. Dankwa's house 
after they picked up information from the vineyard, and when they went in there, there was a handwritten speech signed by J.B. Dankwa himself on the wake of the assassination attempt. He had already prepared himself to be president. Kwame Nkrumah will die. Today, dear, he will die. And when he dies, we will just walk into the broadcasting house and read this speech. In those days, the first point of call was the GBC, Ghana Broadcasting Corporation, where cool makers announced their presence. But it failed. So Kwame Nkrumah said, ah... You wanted to be president. Remember, it happened to Hamid Ujiwa too. Hamid Ujiwa was supposed to assassinate Rawlings. And there was a speech that had been read onto a tape, recorded onto a tape, and given to Hamid Ujiwa. He was told, Bwachijan told him, when you succeed, because I am wanted in Ghana, I'm lacking somewhere in Togo. When the coup succeeds, just go to GBC and announce that this is what has happened. Rawlings is no more the leader of this nation and that you've taken over power and your leader will give a speech right now and play the tape. But Giwa did not do the right thing and Rawlings came back and they were all arrested and shot and killed. In the case of J.B. Dankwa, he wrote the speech himself and signed it himself in his own handwriting, announcing the death of Kwame Nkrumah and that he was the new president of the republic. But Nkrumah didn't die and they found that letter, that speech. Nkrumah said, put him in there, he's a dangerous man. But whilst in jail, he died. Nkrumah himself was overthrown two years after. He also died in exile in 1972. So those of us who said Nkrumah was imprisoning his political opponents, if you were in his shoes, somebody had already announced your death. This is a dirge he has written. Your obituary is here and he's jubilating that he is the next president we're going to try and find the written if it's still available so that we all can see exactly what he wrote in there Nkrumah never released him till he died even when he was sick and they begged Nkrumah to release him he said no for him to come and kill me and write my obituary no I'm not ready and he died in prison. Now that you know, what would you do? It's the burden of knowledge. This is the Blackboard. Come here. A.K.A. Kukushonama, where we speak truth to power. When we return, we have more. Hey! Wayo! This is the Black Port, a.k.a. Koko Shonamo, where we speak truth to power. And I want to say thank you so much for coming along. Now, 
our country is becoming more and more interesting, isn't it? There's a lady by name Ifwa Asantewa who is engaged in a singathon. A marathon is when you run long distances. Singathon, when you sing long distances. Right? Long distance singing. In other words, singing for a long period. The record, as we told you yesterday, is held by an Indian. He sang for one 105 hours non-stop. And Ifua Asantua, whose photograph you see here, is also singing. She's singing from the 24th all the way down to the 27th. Right? That's what is advertised here. But my brother, this is the fourth day of singing. What are the rules? We hear that when you sing for an hour, you can take a five-minute break. When you sing for four hours, you can take a 20-minute break. So she is able to take some short breaks to replenish her energy, maybe to eat some quick food, maybe to take a quick shower, however she does. It. She's been singing for four days now many people are supporting her there are some other people who think that this doesn't add up to our national interest some people think that it is an exercise in futility whatever your reasons are I think she's made enough name for us to be able to see exactly who she is. Who is this young lady? Have you heard about her before? Today we're going to open her up so that you get to know exactly who she is. Some of the hidden facts. Singaton lady, Ifwa Asantua. Run it, my youth. And this is from Ghana Word. Facts about Ifwa Asantua. The Ghanaian aiming to break Guinness World Record singathon. Run it, my youth. Now, we're going to see exactly who she is. So many people are following her. And some are carried away by her heroic attempt to break the record. Go to the next page. We'll see exactly who she is. The Vice President Mahmoud Baumia has been there. Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Some other celebrities have also gone to encourage her to, you know, push it on and on and on and on and on. Go to the next page. Now, these are the facts. Efua Asantua is an entrepreneur. And she aims to sing for 117 hours. To break the record held by the Indian guy called Wag Mari. She is a wife and a mother of how many children? Three children. She loves to multitask, do so many things at a time. And multitasking is a hobby, and you get to see this. She attempted the Ghana Most Beautiful twice and was a finalist in both attempts. Finalist. She went all the way to the finals. But she couldn't wear the crown. She's very beautiful, isn't she? She is also an ex-beauty queen with the best project known as Miss Tourism. So she's Miss Tourism. She's been Miss Tourism before. And that's her. Miss Tourism Ghana, second princess, right? 2014. And she's the second princess. That's her. Here she looks slimmer. Very beautiful. I think she's even prettier now than then. She's put on some flesh. And for me, she looks prettier then. In fact, now than then. Run it. Now, she 
has been missed tourism before. There are more facts. She is the brain behind the Ghana Outstanding Women Awards, which is known for hosting influential people in the country. She is also the brain behind the Africa Outstanding Women Awards, which is known for hosting influential people in Africa on first attempt. She is the brain behind the Miss Kitty Ghana, where children are introduced to catwalking and beauty pageants in West Africa. And she's also the brain behind Teen Queen Ghana, another beauty contest for teenagers. She is the brain behind Pose for Africa reality show, which has changed the narrative in Ghana's modeling industry. So behind the scenes, this pretty lady has been doing a lot. She's so much into the ass. She has three children. She's married. She is a master planner who can actually dedicate months on her feet to build and execute her own concepts and those of others. And she personally grooms talents behind closed doors. So this is the person we are dealing with. She's been doing this in the periphery for a long time. A master planner. She likes to multitask. She attempted so many beauty contests, Ghana's Most Beautiful and Miss Tourism and all that. And she is a mother of how many children? Three children. This is the pretty lady we're talking about. And even all drained from energy and all that, when you see her, you still know that she still has her beauty. Well, I am not in support of a singaton. I think that we have established artists who could be pushed to break grounds and set records rather than break records. Do you know the difference? There are established artists who can be pushed and supported by the nation. To set new records internationally. Rather than pushing an unprofessional artist. And pushing her to endure pain. Now this singer is all about pain. Why is it so important for a man to go through a lot of pain? You are tired, you see her holding her knees, she's losing her voice, she's tired, she can't sleep. You can only break for 5 minutes or 20 minutes, depending on where you are breaking. It's pain. Singing should be done from the heart. You are enjoying what you're doing, you are happy, other people are happy, but where you have to strain, go through pain, then the beauty of singing is lost. Am I making sense? You are only doing it to break a record. It's like going to school just to pass an examination. You are not going there for knowledge. You are only doing it for the record. Like those people who just want to fill a stadium and they will say they have filled the stadium. Or fill the O2 and they say they fill the O2. They can do anything possible. Ship people in there. Carry them in buses. At the end of the day, they say, yeah, we feel the O2. But you know what you went through to get that. Is it about filling the stadium or the O2 or entertaining people with quality music? We have to draw the priority right. I will not lie. I am not in support of this. It will hurt me if at the end of the day she collapses and they are carrying her to you know, some hospital taxpayers' money used to treat her and all that. And we all say, oh, she attempted, she did well. It's good, good, good. God bless her. You know what we need in Ghana? We need a workathon. What Ghana needs is not a singathon, but a workathon. There's so many lazy Ghanaians. Who are just satisfied going around begging. 
they have the opportunity to work, yet they create artificial unemployment. We need to encourage all of them to kill laziness and work. It's workathon we need, not singathon. To God be the glory. My name is Black Rasta, and I want to say thank you so much. Come here. I appreciate you, and I want to say thank you. I love you. That's, that's all we have for today. And I want to say thank you so much. We are not able to pick up your messages. All right. Looks like we can have some messages, right? All right. So let's have this. Uh, this is from Alaji. He says, good evening, Black Rasta, watching you live. Uh, my greetings to Honorable Alaji A.B.A. Fuseni, MP for Narugu. Uh, but Black Rasta, may God bless you. Blessed love. Uh, youngster Ali says, God bless you. Black for another lecture. More fire. Uh, Cyril Ewea Pepra says, happy Christmas, Black. And then Doniba. Abraham says, I would like to work with you, please. Oh, okay. I'm glad. So you have our number on the screen. So you can send us a message and tell us what you want to do. Right? Tell us. And then you send us a little CV. We'll look at it and we are happy to work with people, you know. Victoria Mausi says, bless you. Ziblim Haruna says, watching you live from Tamale. Uh, whenever I listen to you, uh, I still have hope. Please continue to educate us and remind some of our greedy leaders to do things right. We also have Ras Osaje for Dua Bill, Tindando, Gomado, Yinzor Bill says, Wayo. He says, Wayo. And he says, Regards from Tongo, regards from Accra. Stephen Banda says, The king is life. Black Rasta, no size. And uh, Stephen Banda says, I have visited my brother. And we are listening to you live. So where are you? So we can shout to you properly. But wherever you are, big up yourself. And this is my teacher, Black. Thanks for your teachings. Thank you for listening. Lovewell says, Ubiaba uh, Nye from Tema. It says, good morning, Mr. Black. And uh, hope you're good. Preach on, Dada. Because only you we depend on for the change of mindset. Because we citizens of Ghana... We appreciate you so much. And I appreciate you too. I agree. Say Ram says. Kukunumu uh, bepay. The pot will break. I agree. Say Ram. Alright. Muhammad Banjaya 1 says. Speak truth to power. Bro. Much love and respect to you. And the entire crew. Na uzo ma. Kachi. Ntiti. May God bless you, grow you, you know, and bless you for us. That's what he's saying. The Paya Pam Mbiale. We also love you so much. Come here, where you signed MC Scorpion from Ashima. Right? And then one any boy says, Welcome, Black. Good evening. Sedu Abu says, Youth Prophet, Black Rasta. Uh, Kojo One Fool says, Greetings, Black Rasta. Love you, Kojo. Harry Akotia says, Good evening, Black Rasta. Good to see you. Rap Tanda says, Today I am late, but I am happy to catch up with you, my legendary Black. Benjamin Achu says, Word. Francis Ampim says, uh, Good evening. Uh, please tell me the reason why the politicians find it difficult to understand uh, their opinions. All right? Well. Sufyan Sulevana says, Assalamu alaikum, Black Rasta. Hope you are doing well by the grace of Allah. I'm happy to be here live today. Uh, always share your program on Facebook. Oh, thank you so much for sharing. We appreciate you and we love you. It's been the Black Pot, aka Koko Show. No more. We love you and we apologize that the internet was so. These days we experience it a lot when it's time for the Black Pot. <laughs> we know what it is. And we shall deal with it. We love you. Keep staying firm. If you miss it, we shall always upload the full version so you can watch it and share. Yeah? I love you. Hey! Wayo!